Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Yesterday, Joseph said, Joseph, uh, please uh, tell us, first of all, where you're calling in from and uh, what you do for a living with. Uh, you got to help me with the pronunciation here. It's uh, is it raw? Ramyun? Yeah, you got it. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I am the founder and CEO of Ramyun, uh, Ramyun, which is kind of the better for you Korean plant based instant noodle company. And so that is the brand. And then currently, I'm also a full time employee at a major bank. Uh, and I do business loans, lines and bankings on that side as well. Awesome. Yeah, I, w- I always love to hear, you know, a little bit more about, you know, what people do if they're not in like in the business full time. And that's a lot of people's situations. If you listen to any of my podcast, all, a lot of entrepreneurs, yeah. they have ideas or selling CPG brands, and you'll still kind of have like one foot in uh, in a career still. So when did you actually start with this uh, with this CPG brand? And uh, tell me a little bit about your background. And maybe there's something you noticed out there in the market that you're trying to do a little bit differently, or uh, maybe more authentically uh, when it comes to this brand, uh, than what's out there in the market already. Yeah, basically, that that's really it. You know, I'm sure you have your nostalgic moments of, you know, eating instant noodles growing up while in college, etc, while traveling, right. But really, my background is in finance for the past probably 10 years. However, during the pandemic, I wanted to do something as a side hustle. And so I gathered up my banker friends were like, hey, let's do something for fun, shits and giggles. Uh, fast forward, well, almost four years now. And here we are, full-blown business. Uh, We're in like under 100 doors, but we've launched last year, quickly growing, building the team. But essentially, it all started with sort of the need for a better product, but still familiar to me and nostalgic to me and good for me and my family. Going back to my Korean immigrant roots, that was it. It was like instant noodles. I remember growing up, the family would gather around the table and we would have a big pot of instant ramen. And that was, you know, a very nostalgic moment for me, right? So I wanted to do justice. I mean, there's so many foods out there that we grew up on, but I kind of chose that because probably one of the most, you know, most eaten food that I had ever, you know, would you know, experienced growing up. So yeah. Yeah, that's that awesome. Man. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I appreciate you sharing that. And obviously, um, so you're trying to do something with a little bit like a healthier option, but not like, you know, compromise on taste and still get that like, you know, old homegrown, like home style, you know, ramen kind of taste. So what, what is basically like, you know, if I were to go buy my like my traditional, like, you know, instant noodles at the grocery store, um, you know, you get 12 of them for $5 or whatever it is. But what, what is really yeah. like the big problem with those? And like, like, I guess, from a health standpoint, and uh, what are you doing differently with your product? Yeah, great question. I mean, there's so much to dive there, right? I mean, this whole thing really, if I go deeper into my personal story, it started with my mom and her battles with cancer, like in my early 20s and my college days. Like there was a point in time where I really couldn't serve her anything to eat because of her chemotherapy. And so it like brings me back to those moments. It's like, man, what if I had something like this when she was around? And that was really the inspiration. Kind of, you mentioned, you know, making it more home style, right? I literally with my partners, we created the formula in my kitchen for two years. And a lot of those were nights on my own after work when I really didn't do, feel like doing anything, just formulating different blends, hundreds of variations. And yeah, I mean, and so the biggest difference is that it was created from a, I want to serve this to my family, my loved ones point of view versus bottom line, net profits uh, of a major corporation. So it's, it's very meaningful there because it engraves what our projections will be as a company too. That will always be the foundation. So right now, the biggest difference is that we are, we made this so that everyone could have a seat at the table. You know, uh, it's gluten-free, which is very rare characteristics because most products are made with wheat. Uh, we, we chose organic rice noodles and uh, made it super gut friendly with superfoods, 15 plus superfoods, a lot of gut friendly foods, like for instance, like I think almost close to a thousand milligrams of turmeric in a savory curry. We use organic spice blends for that curry flavor, authentic gochugaru, which is Korean chili pepper for the spicy flavor. And we just really load it up with things that I would think would make a good soup, but at the same time, it's good for your gut, good for your body. Um, and, and something that you can kind of still be familiar with and have that nostalgia, you know, redefined for you. So that's what's really different. 
and we're 100 plant based so it's really good for the planet too which was a big thing for me it's like i really wanted to do good with this I have my brand as a force for good right so i think one of the things that i learned over time was that animal agriculture and i'm not vegan or anything like that but um, animal agriculture is it's really bad i think it makes up 80 or Or close to 80 percent of the the air pollution right so which was crazy stats that i've learned over the years and so i wanted to make uh you know a good carbon footprint product brand something that was good for you and for the planet sounds like a cliche now with all the better for you products out there but really i think a lot of these founders i give them a lot of props because they have the similar kind of let's do good kind of mindset but essentially you know that's what brings us apart is where we started and the ingredients that we use and taste Yeah, that's the biggest one. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And obviously, as you said, like it might sound like a cliche. And I mean, there, but there is a lot of new brands trying to do things the right way and make things that are plant based and you know, give people those alternatives that they've been probably looking for for years and never really found something that they could really land on and, you know, have and enjoy on a regular basis. I think one of the biggest yeah. issues that I find, you know, talking to so many CPG owners and many of them do, you know, gluten free or plant based. And I think a lot of times with, you know, some of the things that are out there, it's, just, it's not always super clear what it means. Like you say something is gluten free, like the threshold for something being gluten free is still like, I think it's like 50 parts per milligram or whatever it is just like there's still way too much for somebody who has celiac or you know say something is uh like organic or it's just like all natural it's like those labels don't really have like a very well defined meaning but like when you do find a product like yours that you can tell just from looking at the label it's like no this is all just like it's all just real food and real ingredients yeah. i think at the end of the day that's really what people are looking for and something that can kind of trigger that nostalgia like you mentioned when it is something like it's just like a legacy like uh experience like it like it is like eating eating ramen that way so no that definitely makes sense and uh, again at the end of the day whether it's plant-based or not i think people are just looking for whole ingredients like i've seen a lot of products go so far in the you know like wanting to be like plant-based and vegan that they went right past the like natural foods all the way around to like mostly synthetic ingredients again just for the sake of saying it's plant-based but you can make delicious oh things plant-based with just yeah. regular like ingredients like you're doing so uh, no, i definitely applaud you that it's not easy you know there, there is a lot of yeah. ways to cut corners if you're doing plant-based food likewise like mm -hmm. there is if you're doing you know meat-based or whatever you know it is whether it's a snack food or whatever it is so yeah, that's amazing and i guess tell me a little bit more about your experience getting into these 75 doors that you mentioned uh was that something that you were seeking out uh, affirmatively like you're doing like cold outreaching trying to get a buyer or was it somebody that approached you after some time uh can you tell me a little bit about that experience well we launched last year at the natural foods expo in anaheim oh, cool. and it's kind of like a soft launch slash mm -hmm. launch uh, we really don't have a go-to market strategy i didn't even know what that was to be honest with you it was just kind of like hey products ready let's do it um let's just create a small batch let's let's run for it 2023 was more of like let's test the market validate mm -hmm. the product we don't have money to kind of buy a sample size or by our core customers, but let's just see how it does. We did take two years creating something that no one has um, or no one has thought of, right? Because because I, I learned during the process that most food products are kind of blended or are indeed outside via third party. And so you're really getting the same thing under a different hood, right? So mm -hmm. whereas we were doing completely different from scratch. So let's see what happens. And so after the expo, I pitched Erwan and within a month we were accepted and approved and I found out after the fact that Erwan is probably one of the healthiest most stringent almost cultish you know retail chains out there and I don't even shop at Erwan but I like I just pitched it because my my co-packer said you should probably pitch there so that one was a cold cold kind of uh, lead that I just pushed and our product was validated from um, day one, right? And so it was very exciting. But then after that, you know, me and my partner were, were kind of, you know, full time doing our banking, you know, job. And so we really didn't have a lot of time to expand the business. So we're like, hey, you know, just take it easy for this year, see what we can get. And we worked with the broker for about nine months from that point. And um, yeah, they've kind of helped us get into more doors. And then this is probably more for the uh, new brands out there, but you know we utilize what's out there on the online platform. So you could be looking at Fair, Shopify, Amazon. Uh, Pod Foods is great just to put your product on the market because you can. What is, what is that? I've not heard of that before. Pod Foods. Yeah, Pod Foods. They've only been around like maybe six years or so. They're a startup as well, but they're essentially a better for you distributor. Right? Oh, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, more geared towards the the founders, so they have clear fees and um, you know percentages. But yeah, they, they're very easy to work with. You don't have to have you know key accounts to really work with them. Like anyone can kind of open the door with them and you know be exposed to the buyers. 
um, at independent to you know national chain level. So Pop Foods is great. So I mean, so those were some of the the ways we kind of got our foot in the door, got our you know hands wet a little bit, and kind of got into where we are you know today. And then it's completely different dynamics this year. But yeah, that's how things started. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that about you know, that distro site, because it's one of the biggest pain points I hear, like doing so many CPG interviews is, you know, basically just around like the distribution and all the fees and all the just kind of like shadiness of working with distributors, how it can be sometimes not all oh. the time, obviously, but many times that is like a big, you know, kind of complaint and like a big, you know, point of pain for a lot of CPG brands trying to find, you know, uh, relationships that make sense to be able to do that. And uh, it's, it's great for people to know. So I appreciate you mentioning that. And uh, I guess so, so as you're coming into this year, I know you said, you know, the breakdown looks a little bit different. Uh, are you kind of ramping up the more like a uh, direct to consumer side coming into this year with your e-commerce and your Amazon or what's a little bit different this year than I know you said you were kind of taking it easy and just like focusing on your, uh, yeah. you know, your careers and jobs last year. So, yeah, I mean, th this year is, is completely different because last year we're kind of able to uh, validate our product as a market for it. Right. So mm -hmm. clearly this cup noodle thing is super underrepresented. Uh, when it comes to like shelf space at retail stores, like if you go to Whole Foods right now, there's like maybe like this much of self shelf space, you know, for cup noodles. Um, and I'm sorry to say this, but most of them do not meet up to my standards when it comes to taste and flavor, right? That's why they're, they're so underrepresented. Mm -hmm. But hopefully we bring a different, you know, punch to, to the game. But essentially, kind of this year is more about building a team, right? Because I'm part time, like I need I need a team to kind of, you know, the, the wheels that continue to turn while even though I'm not really full time in the business, right? So I can um, kind of delegate more. And so building like a sales sales team, building uh, kind of the marketing team, uh, the creative, those are pretty much non existent. So creative was huge. Shout out to our um, new chief creative officer, Chris, Chris Altman, um, like he started everything right for us so uh, but it's more about kind of now expanding and ramping up to get to a point where we're really in the market and like people are starting to hear about us and we're doing more pr activations right um, so a different ball game different ball game for sure a lot more money involved too uh, but thankfully we are a group of experienced bankers so we know how money works to a degree so we can leverage and have access to funds um, easier than others i would say but yeah this year we'll see yeah, there's definitely a unique advantage, I will say, in so far as like, you know, yeah. just having the wherewithal when it comes to finance and, you know, having those connections in that world when you do inevitably, you know, are, are looking for funding. Uh, that's another thing that I'm sure you've probably noticed in this market here in 2024, you know, securing funds has been really, really difficult for CPG brands. I think they're, you know, they're only able to secure funds kind of longer in the journey. They're having to do like, you know, five, six years of a proof of concept to really prove before, they, you know, people are coming in and wanting to take a chance with uh, venture capital. So it's yeah. definitely a unique advantage. And I think where a lot of people go wrong and you hear like, you know, 75 percent of businesses fail in their first year. Uh, I think a lot of it probably comes down to money management and their finances. So it's definitely a good place to start. And you know, believe me, talking to so many other you know CPG brand owners, I think everybody feels like they had no idea what they're doing. Even if they thought they did, once you start, you realize you actually know nothing. But it's a good leg to stand on with a finance background, that's for sure. But no, that's awesome. And I guess like what kind of channels are you wanting to you know experience the most amount of like acceleration here in 2024 as you're looking to invest more and build a team? Uh, are you looking to invest more in the wholesale side and go down like the retail route like you have been? Or are you looking to do more of the direct to consumer side? Right. Uh, so in, initially, it was it's growing the marketing and advertising team, but really, I met some really good advisors that that I might be working with in the future as well. I'm trying to see if we can strike a deal, but uh, we pulled back on kind of the D to C, and we're going to focus on B to B. Number one for cash flow reasons, and number two, it's just free marketing and PR just by getting on the shelves. You know, so if you're in let's say 300 doors, that's free marketing while you're making money. It's insane compared to kind of the marketing ad spend on, let's say, IG, and then you're working with all these ad companies, influencers, you're probably breaking even if you're lucky, right? And so because we're such an unknown brand, we thought it was a better idea to continue working on that B2B side. And so what we're looking for this year is probably one national chain to kind of put us on the map and then really trying to see if we can get enough cash flow to sustain the business at that level and then be more financially responsible in trying not to bite more than we can chew, you know? Right. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the goal, but really it's a simple goal for us is, you know, one national chain that'll put us on the map and then we'll kind of support it with all these independent accounts that we have work with regional distributors. So, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be more B2B um, and then uh, we will continue to work on kind of the brand awareness, more the organic traffic on that side, because uh, that always helps with the B2B sales. But um, that's free, more or less. Right. Um, joining PR activations, doing things like this, 
um, you know, Instagram posts, reels, uh, that those are going to be ongoing. So we'll have a cadence for that eventually very soon. But, but that's really the, the plan this year. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And it's so interesting. I always find, you know, how those two kind of channels go hand in hand, whether you're selling direct or you're selling wholesale. Like a lot of people I met that come on the podcast, you know, they kind of just like went viral on social media. They did like a ton of DNC yeah. sales through TikTok or Instagram. But then it, oh it kind of works really well too, to, you know, have a real proof of concept that way to say like, you know, we sold like 500,000 units last year to be able to go to wholesalers and like have a leg to stand on instead of just, um, you know, going to do like a cold pitch like you did, which was successful, obviously, which is amazing. But yeah, like, be a really difficult conversation if you don't really have any type of proof of concept uh, leading up to that. So it, it's interesting how those two go hand in hand. And obviously, you know, the more stores you're in, the more e-com you're going to do, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's really interesting. I love that. And I know I mentioned this right before we hopped on the call. Uh, one question I do always love to ask. I know you're kind of still in the obviously like very growth stages of this business, but um, with two years R and D and you know product development, and now you know kind of getting into uh, much more retail doors now. Surely you've learned a ton along the way. So I guess if you could go back to you know when this was still an idea and we were still in your kitchen, just kind of formulating before you really got into like the operations of the business. If you give yourself any one piece of advice, if you were to kind of go to market and start this business again, what do you think that piece of advice would be? I think it would be pretty much what I'm doing now, but have a go to market strategy, mm -hmm. have enough PR activations so that, um, you know, you kind of immediately gain trust when people are landing on your pages or your, or your social media pages, right. Uh, you know, publications, uh, whatever you can land there. And then, yeah, I'm just, this is a long-term game. Don't rush. Take a deep breath and enjoy the ride as much as you can. Yeah. No, I appreciate that answer. And it's probably not surprised to hear it's something I hear a lot out of, you know, CPG brand owners, which is just like, you know, like I sometimes I'll ask like, you know, in, in, instead of what would you do differently? Like, what would you, what advice would you give somebody starting out? And it's almost always, you know, understand that it's going to take probably five to 10 times longer for everything on the front end than you think. You no, know, even if you already have something formulated and ready to go, like the relationships that you need to be able to scale take a really long time. And if you grow too fast on your sales, you're not going to be able to, you know, deliver on those things and, you know, execute on those things. Like if you like, do some crazy like digital marketing campaign you get a million orders and your capacity for you know production is like five thousand a month uh, it's not looking too good it's gonna be bad for your brand right so uh, no i think i think it's good advice and you know I, I think the more and more that comes up like if somebody were to ask me basically like you know what have i learned from talking to 100 cpg brand owners in the past few months that would be probably not my number one takeaway it's just like you know understand your roadmap understand your runway and like what it takes to get there and not like bite off more than you can chew as you said so i appreciate that advice i, th I think it's really good advice for anybody listening that might be interested in uh, starting a brand like this. So, and yeah, yeah Joseph, I just want to say, um, I just want to give you an opportunity as well. Anybody listening, maybe interested in a potential business partnership with you, or just want to check out the website and see where they can find the product as well. Um, let everybody know how to stay in touch with you all. Well, you can reach me at uh, our, our email info at ramen.com. And then uh, you, you can kind of reach all of us at the same time there. And then our IG is always open. So DM us. But thanks for your support. Uh, thank you, Matt, for having me. Um, wishing you and everyone watching, you know, a huge successful year. Awesome, man. You as well, Joseph. Yeah, I love it. I love what you're doing. I love your why behind what you're doing. It's an awesome story. And uh, yeah, I wish you the best of luck and continued success as well. And I really look forward to uh, keeping in touch as well. Yes, sir. Thanks, Joseph. All right. So that's it, huh? Thanks, everybody. Yep.